we're going to prove this result about prime numbers and powers of two. And this is a really cute sort of question because the particular content of the question actually has some uh, really interesting historical implications uh, for mathematics and, uh, and its development over the centuries. So let's have a look. Prove that if 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, then n is prime by proving the contrapositive. Okay, let's think about this for a second. For starters, the reason why I said this is a cute question is that 2 to the n minus 1, this is not just some random result, uh, 2 to the n minus 1, obviously it's an odd number because 2 to the n is always going to be even, uh, but 2 to the n minus 1 often is a prime number. It's not just any prime, um, it's what we call a mersenne number prime, named after a French mathematician who discovered that this was a nice and convenient way to develop or, or to find prime numbers, particularly very large ones. You know, when things are off to an exponential, they grow super fast. Uh, in fact, um, all of the largest prime numbers that we've discovered, you know, numbers that go for hundreds and hundreds of digits um, that, you know, compu supercomputers are crunching through and trying to calculate, is this thing prime, is it, is it composite or whatever. All of the large primes that we know about, they're all of this form. They are all Mersenne primes. So that's why this is not just, uh, you know, uh, something we can prove by the contrapositive. It is also, uh, it is also having historical value. How do we prove this? Well, because the question has given us this kind of, well, a pretty heavy nudge, right? Use the contrapositive. What I have to say is, how do I get the contrapositive out of this statement? And then I will try and prove that directly. So uh, you can see here, um, t if 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, so 2 to the n minus 1 is prime is the first half, it's the antecedent clause or statement within this implication. Um, I'm going to negate that and put it rather than at the beginning, I'm going to put it at the end. And then you've got this second half, the consequent statement, then n is prime. So I'm going to negate that as well and put it at the beginning. So how do I state that? I can say um, this is the contrapositive, so I'm just going to write that here. The contrapositive uh, not Q implies not P in this particular question is um, if N is not prime, just very simply negating it, then here comes not P, then to the N minus 1 is not prime. Now um, I did say, it did slip in a little bit before, I did, um, you might want to say the word composite here, right? But we do know there are numbers that are neither prime nor composite, uh, numbers like 1, 0, weirdos like that. Uh, they are of course very important numbers for not sitting in these categories, but that's why I can't say if n is composite, um, then 2 to the n minus 1 is composite, that's not the full negation. I need the exact opposite of the statement that we began with, statements in fact. How do we go about this? Well, I want to think about if n is not prime, what can I, like this is what I'm required to prove, uh, what can I say about it? Well, uh, it's to do with factorization, right? So what I can say is, uh, let this number n, let it be factorized into, I mean, who knows how many factors uh, it has, but it's going to have at least two that are not uh, that are not going to be 1. So I can say um, n equals, say, a times b, where a and b, they both need to be whole numbers. a and b are whole numbers. And of course, if a or b were 1, then uh, that would be a problem, right? Because then I could say, oh, uh, what if n was 1 times 11? Uh, it, does that count? And the answer is no, of course. Uh, 1 times 11 is 11. 11 is, is prime. So uh, I have to say, I have to restrict even further. Um, and a and B cannot equal 1. So here's my groundwork. Uh, what can I do with this? Well, I want to prove that if n is not prime, if n can be written like this, then 2 to the n minus 1 is also not prime. So in other words, I can say uh, 2 to the power of n minus 1 equals 2 to the power of AB minus 1. Hmm. Then you might think I'm stuck <laughs> because there's not much that it looks like you can do with this thing. Um, I want to prove uh, that this thing is not prime, but it, it doesn't look like there's any obvious like manipulation you could do to it. If you were being asked to simplify um, and you had some expression or some function and this was the last line that you ended up with, I think most of us would say, I'm pretty happy with that. It is as simple as it gets. So where do I go next? There are no obvious steps. Well, uh, it is kind of true that this is as simple as it gets. We need to complicate this object in order to prove what we want to prove. Uh, and to help you sort of see what's going on here, I want you to remember 
Let me use this highlighter. Um, but what does it mean for two to the n minus one to not be prime? Well, it's very similar to n not being prime. I need to be able to write some kind of factorization. I need to be able to say uh, that this, this term here, or expression rather, I should be able to write it as something times something else where neither of those things is one. If, if neither of them are one, and, and they're whole numbers, uh, then, well, there's a factorization. So it's not going to be primes. So that's where I need to hand, head, head to. How can I factorize this thing? Um, how can I work with this term here and come up with something uh, factorizable? Is that a word? Uh, composite, I guess. To show that this is a factorizable object, I, I want to think, well, what objects vaguely look like this that I do know how to factorize? Now, you can see um, from the start here, you've got this term here, it's got an index, it's got a, the whole thing is a power, and then you take away one. I actually do know how to factorize a bunch of things that are somewhat in that format. Something uh, raised to a power minus one. Um, the simplest one that we know about, we learned about years ago. Um, we would call it the difference of uh, squares, but this is a particular difference of squares. Um, not just a squared minus b squared, but take away one. This is really easy to factorize, in fact. Um, it's just x minus one, x plus one. That's great. Now, the only problem with using this result is that it relies on the fact that the index here is two, and I don't know what this index is. Um, it's not gonna be two, it's gonna be some uh, non-prime number. So I, I need to go from this to something, something larger and more complicated. So let's see if we can establish a pattern of factorization that can help us um, following this pattern to work with this object up here. Let's consider a higher power because um, I'm going uh, in the direction of two to the power of AB, and AB I know um, as a non-prime number is gonna have to be a bit bigger than this. What's the factorization of x cubed minus one? Now you might know this one. Um, this is a, a difference of cubed. It's actually remarkably similar to the factorization for difference of squares. It's x minus one and then x squared plus x plus one. You could uh, expand this out to contain yourself if you uh, haven't seen this result before. If you just multiply and distribute through uh, everything by x, you'd get x cubed plus x squared plus x x cubed plus x squared plus x, I might as well write that down, x cubed plus x squared plus x, and then when you distribute the minus one, you're going to get uh, minus x squared minus x minus one. So you can see uh, the x squareds cancel, the x's cancel, and that just leaves you with the x cubed and the minus one just like you wanted. So this is actually really neat, and you can continue this pattern, it's actually something which is very useful when you're deriving the power rule for differentiating x to the power of n. That's the objects that I've got here, right? I can say uh, x to the four minus one, I just wanna establish the pattern here. It's gonna start with an x minus one, and then it's gonna go x cubed, x squared, all of the x terms all the way down to one. So, I, I wanna try and get to uh, something like this, this AB, right? Well, if I go up to say, and you'll see why I'm choosing this in a second, if I go up to some arbitrary uh, positive integer like B, right? Uh, I'm gonna go x to the minus, uh, x to the B minus one equals, right? How does it begin? Well, continuing the pattern, they all begin with x minus one, right? So you're gonna have the x minus one out the front, and then what you get is this, uh, it's this long polynomial that has one and x and x squared all the way up to uh, this largest power where that largest power is always, just look at it carefully, one less, whoa, that was much bigger than I anticipated, uh, one less than the power that you started with. You can see I've got two where I had three and then uh, even though it's not written there, you can see there's a one hiding here and there's a two. So you can see I'm going to go from one to x to x squared and I'm gonna terminate on the power of x just one less than what's in my original expression. So what's one less than b? It's b minus one. So I'm gonna go b minus one, and then I'm gonna have one less than that, which I guess would be b minus two. Continue the pattern, b minus three, and it keeps going until you finish on one, which you can see in all of these uh, factorizations up above here. Now, how does this help me? Well, uh, think about this, right? Think about how this is related to this object that we have up here. And I'm gonna name this, I'm gonna call this uh, equation one so that I can work with it. Um, I can say, well, if I substitute instead of x, if I put in two to the power of a in there, um, then what I'm gonna have here on the left-hand side is two to the power of a, b. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write two to the power of a, that's my chosen x, uh, to the power of b minus one equals, all right. 
everywhere that I had x, I'm just going to substitute it for 2 to the power of a. So let's have a go. 2 to the power of a minus 1. Uh, and then what have I got here? All right, maybe I'll draw a bigger bracket so I can fit in my 2 to the power of a to the b minus 1, 2 to the power of a again, to the b minus 2. Um, one more time to complete the pattern, b minus 3, and then dot, 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 all the way to 1. All right, so what have I got here? Well, on my left-hand side, this is where I left off in equation one, right? This is that object where I was like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Well, now I do know what to do with this thing. I can say, well, I've got this factorization written here on the right-hand side. So I can say, uh, substitute this result into one. Uh, 2 to the n minus 1, instead of writing it as 2 to the ab minus 1, I'm going to take everything here and duplicate that down. So where does this lead me? I mean, it's a factorization, but we already established that just because you have um, something times something, that doesn't mean that you're going to have a non-prime number. One of those uh, two factors might be 1. So 1 times 11 doesn't mean that 11 is non-prime. So I need to show that neither of these two things, this object and this object, neither of them can be equal to 1. How do I do that? Well, for starters, um, you can see, let's deal with this one over here on the right-hand side. This can't possibly equal to 1 because you can see there's a 1 right there and then you're adding things to it, right? All of these things that are added to 1 mean you're going to be bigger than 1. So I can say, uh, let's, oh, I'll just leave those arrows there, that's fine. Everything in here that can't equal 1. Well, that leaves me with uh, this object on the left-hand side. Think about this. 2 to the n minus 1, uh, it can equal 1 under certain circumstances, but we actually know that's not, that's not the case because of a restriction that we placed on A right at the very beginning. You can see over here, A and B, they can't be 1, right? So therefore, I can say, if A can't be 1, then 2 to the power of A can't possibly be 2 to the power of 1 which is 2, and that means 2 to the a minus 1, that can't possibly be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So you can see I've just uh, you know, used this, uh, raised it to the power of uh, the previous line, and then I've subtracted 1 from both sides to land on this. So therefore I can say, therefore 2 to the n minus 1 is not prime, which is exactly what I was setting out to prove in the contrapositive right here. So I started with this, I proved that this was the case, I'm pretty much finished. All I need to say at the very end is, uh, by, you could either say, by the law of the contrapositive, um, or by contraposition is another concise way of saying, which is also uh, equivalent. I can say, if uh, 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, then n must be prime. And there's that proof of that lovely result about Mersenne primes.